Private Cloud Data Services provides data analytics applications featuring use case optimized data services, including data warehousing, data engineering, and machine learning. In this demo, I'll walk through how data services with cloud native capabilities enables an open data lake house with the agility, flexibility, and cost efficiency of cloud architectures. I'll also include an open data lake house example, leveraging both Apache Iceberg and Apache Ozone, and a large language model AMP using Cloudera Machine Learning. The cloud native architecture is what makes all of this work by having separate containerized compute from your private cloud-based cluster. You can now scale compute independently from storage, which enables you to optimize your cost and compute resources. You can size each of your clusters based on the amount of compute resources needed, but you can also create multiple data service clusters as I've just shown. To add your private cloud containerized cluster, you can choose either an AirGAT or an internet install method. And then you have an option of choosing a dedicated on-premises OpenShift cluster or using our embedded ECS offering. I'm now going to launch the DW service. So once I open up the containerized cluster, click on data warehousing, and look, next I'm going to show you some of the key platform benefits that you get across all data services. I'm going to leverage the data warehouse data service to create a new virtual cluster for a new functional business analyst. You're able to onboard new applications or new teams with push button workload provisioning. And this function is there for not just DW, but for data engineering and ML as well. No more waiting weeks or months to start up a new project. We'll start by creating your new virtual warehouse. The first thing that you look at is selecting your size. This is a t-shirt sizing based on your workload needs. You then have a few key parameters around auto suspend, concurrency auto scaling, as well as query isolation. This gives you the flexibility as a customer to define the right performance at the right cost to meet your SLAs. You can see now that we have two virtual clusters created, each with their own number of cores and memory. What this means is that each virtual cluster has its own compute isolation, which avoids the noisy neighbor scenario. This ensures that you as a business get to define the appropriate compute to meet your business SLAs. Let's now talk about use cases leveraging the power of the platform. We're gonna start with an open data lake house on private cloud. Our lake house is powered by Apache Iceberg, an open source table format in Apache Ozone, a highly scalable distributed storage for analytics, big data, and cloud native applications. So why did we choose Iceberg? First, it provides multi-function analytics already pre-integrated with no vendor lock-in. Secondly, it's a shareable platform with open data formats. Thirdly, it can work on any cloud and any storage. And fourthly, it includes enterprise security for lineage, governance, and compliance. You can see that we have Apache Ozone fully integrated. The key benefits are better performance, four times more storage density, 10 times more scalable, and overall lower cost per terabyte. As you can see, we also have Apache Atlas fully integrated. So that means you get your overall lineage and information about the assets, whether you're looking at the properties of a table, the lineage of how the information is created, the relationships, the classifications, and also looking at it from an audibility perspective. It provides that full data governance that you need for the enterprise. Next, we have the full integration with Ranger. And you can see that we're able to have the authorizations across the various engines that are needed. We also have full integration with Apache Fleet for your event-driven applications or your data pipelines. Let's now launch our data warehouse data service as we look at the ability to interact with iceberg tables. So I'm now in the, the Q editor. And you can see first I have the ability to describe the table where we highlight that it is a iceberg data format. Secondly, we're able to look at the overall history 
uh, from a snapshot perspective. This is important as you're looking to understand how you do uh, time travel. We're also able to alter the partition on the fly, which gives you a lot better performance depending on the types of scans that you're doing. We're then able to execute rollbacks depending on what information you need to refine. And then finally, you can see as we perform the last select statement to be able to get the information back based on a time period. You've now seen how we have full integration with Apache Ozone and Apache Iceberg. This means that any of your data services can be able to read from or write to Iceberg tables, whether that's in data warehousing, as you have seen, as well as data engineering, and machine learning. Let's now look at the ability to deploy a large language model using Cloud Air Machine Learning. But I want to talk about the differentiation of deploying this within private cloud. We do have a applied ML prototype that will deploy all the necessary information for you to start building your large language model. The key difference is, is that you're now able to include your own documentation to provide your enterprise context. Let's go ahead and configure the project. Now let's go ahead and configure the project. You're able to determine what air tube you want to use. For this one, we'll use our PBJ workbench. You're also able to pick your, your images and let's go ahead and launch the project. Once you launch the project, let's go ahead and look at what's being deployed. So you can click on the view status page. You'll see that the AMP is running. It's first installing the dependencies. We're now looking to run the job to download pre-trained models. And then we have the opportunity to populate our vector database with our document embeddings. These are the enterprise specific information that you need to provide that additional business context. And so this walks through kind of the process flow in order to be able to add your information in. Now that we went to the steps, let's go and launch the Flask application that has the chatbot interface. So let's go ahead and look at the question of how do data scientists use CML? You'll see here, once we have the response is that without context, it provides a general answer, which really isn't correct. But in using a context, it's able to provide more clarity of what does that mean to Cloudera of what CML is. This is where you have the power as an enterprise to add in your additional context. And as I showed earlier, you're able to upload that context within your own private cloud. Keep that information within your enterprise. To recap, what I've shown you is how we architected private cloud data services as cloud native from the ground up. I've shown you how you can separate compute and storage, quickly onboard new teams within their data service, automatically scale up and down compute resources on demand, and ensure each cluster will work independently with predictable SLAs. I also showed you how you can leverage an open data lake house and deploy a large language model. Thank you for watching and we look forward to hearing from you on the awesome use cases you deploy with private cloud data services. <laughs>